you know when you were a kid and you'd read like storybooks or something and it's like where are all the magical characters i mean that's what it looks like <laughs> it's hidden down there in that hill they're down there All right, y'all, keeping it real time. The last time we saw you, we gave you a site tour of this lovely RV site, and we said that we are gonna do this for one night and go boondocking. But last night we got some seriously bad storms. Where we are in Wall, Sleepy Hollow Campground, we got over 60 mile an hour wind gusts, and it was hitting us broadside. We were rocking and rolling around, but it was fine. We didn't get any hail. Just to the north of us in the same county, they got five inch hail. Y'all, that's like baseball size hail. And RVs then, aren't made for that. And then the night before we had arrived, they had gotten it in the area too. Yep, really bad storm. Started in Wyoming, came this way, bad. Tonight, it's not supposed to be a given, but there's uh, another chance of night three of this apocalyptic mm -hmm. mess that they like to call around here. So we decided we just can't do the boondocking because we missed it by a razor's edge, y'all. It was really close. You don't want to mess around with five inch hail. And should we let them know where our epic boondocking spot was going to be? We're just going to show y'all. Yeah, and we got to drive out there as a dry run just to test it out. We were in love with it, totally. It's on the rim of the Badlands. Yeah. The Buffalo Gap National Grasslands, mm -hmm. also on Campinium, they call it like Nomad View. It is beautiful, and they had all kinds of spaces it was for still us. Space. Oh! But then it rained a lot, and, and it, it it does get kind of ruddy. So that was a thing. But now you know severe weather, so we're probably we're trying to avoid it. And the whole area yep. is just like I don't we don't know where to go, but we're heading to Sheridan, Wyoming. Yeah. And we've actually talked to a lady there who said last night they escaped all the nasty weather. We're just going to a county park that just has electric, but it's supposed to be hot this week just so we can have time to reset because now we're going to a location we weren't expecting to and we need time to see where we're going to boondock. We are going to boondock. We just have yep. to reset and see what's in this new area, which I think is close to Bighorn National Park. I so think so. Or National Forest. Because yeah. we also need to make sure that the internet is great there because <laughs> we have to work and we don't have um, Star... Not Starling. It is Starling. Yeah, we don't have Starling. We don't have Starling. The RV Park is kicking us out at 11, so we have to hurry. It's like we got to go. <laughs> this is like the latest we have ever <laughs> stayed on drive day. <laughs> we're not these people, typical RVers, who get up at the crack of noon and then they leave by the skin of their teeth before the place shuts down. No. We usually get out by 8.30 or 9. This is not like us, and but we didn't know what we were doing until yeah. I picked up the camera. All right. You ready to go on this last <laughs> minute thing? I'm ready to go. Um, finally, let's go. Welcome to Wyoming. There she goes. She was late. We made it to Wyoming in the RV, y'all. And they have a beautiful Welcome to Wyoming sign. This is Matthew filling up the water in a horse pasture. Yep, I have never ever stayed or even stepped on a horse track before. Now we're staying on the infield. How cool is that? There's some horses. Keeps getting closer. It's like, who are you people? And we're currently filling um, the RV with water because it's only electric sites. It's like 20 a night. Um, they have a dump station down there that you can dump. Good morning, everybody. 
You know, some people talk about getting to stay on the infield of a NASCAR event. Well, we get something even better. Let's go see what our view is. That's right. We get the infield of a horse track. Look at this. And where there's a horse track, there must be horses. Now, they have all kinds of stalls here. They have these open pens. And then they have down there, you see all of the rows and rows of closed stalls. A lot of those have padlocks on them. Now there's some machinery in the background. Um, there's a big like display area over there where they used to have like monster truck rallies as well as agricultural events with horses and stuff. And they told us that just didn't do wonders for the soil over the years. So they were replacing it. So that's what the big front end loaders are doing. They're just replacing the soil. I tell you, we really like staying here. It's something different. When we first got here, we're like, yeah, that's not very glamorous. <laughs> Just to be honest. But, you know, it's really nice. We really enjoy it here. Except for the machinery, it's pretty quiet. Um, sometimes in the afternoons, they'll have I'm, what I'm going to guess is like a 4-H event. They have a lot of kids who will... Uh, you know, parents will bring their horses and they'll get taught how to ride horses around the track. Uh, that's always fun to watch. We saw one guy who was learning how to, uh, like, rope a steer. Or not rope a steer, but I don't know what it's called. When they tackle it, they get off the horse and they wrestle it down. He was trying to do that with, like, a, a dummy on a four-wheeler. It was something else. <laughs> he wasn't very good at it, but he was learning. He was trying. But look at that in the background. Can you see it? I'm going to point, but it's not going to be exact. Way off in the distance, you should be able to see these mountains. We see one, two, three snow-capped snow peaks from here. And those are the Bighorn Mountains. It is Saturday, June the 18th, and today we were supposed to leave the horse track, but instead <laughs> we're going out to explore the Bighorn what is it? Big, Big Horn, Horn Mountains. Big Horn Mountains. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're staying, we're trying to stay another week is because we got an email in the business day on Thursday. Yeah, and that email was from our internet provider saying that their supplier requires us to have a new SIM card, which is easy. You take the old one out, you put the new one in. It takes you 10 seconds. The problem is getting it. So they're going to two-day UPS it to the local UPS store here, which means we need to be here because otherwise, where are we gonna get it sent to? So that's what's delaying us right now. Yeah, we were gonna head to Riverton. Uh, there's nothing in Riverton to get <laughs> no. the card sent to um, the RV parks there, a little, what? left to be desired yeah um, and we didn't want to pay for a whole week just to get something delivered so anyways we asked the horse park or the horse track people if we could stay here because mm -hmm. we're expecting a package and they said yeah they don't have anything going on until this coming weekend so we're going to try to bug out by thursday and instead of going south now you know towards jackson hole which we wanted to do because oh, yeah. my birthday is the day before july 4th yay yay um we're probably going to go north into montana and it might be cooler by doing that too so that's and the plans anyways <laughs> y'all look that's where we're parked you see us way over yonder now look where we look where we came from do you see that squiggly thing down there yep that's the road where we started all right on to our next torturous view huh yeah torturous view y'all <laughs> it's hard work but somebody's got to do it Y'all, I got some bad news. You ought to not come to my, Wyoming. Just don't come here. Because you certainly wouldn't want to get a look at all this, would you? 
I mean, who wants to stand here and stare at this stuff all day? <laughs> all right, y'all, we just started up the Bighorn Mountains and we're taking our first hike, uh, spontaneous hike. And you'll have to excuse the noise. That's our neighbors right there. They're boondocking. And they have an open frame generator instead of an inverter generator. Inverter generators are more quiet. And if you like this video, give us a like. Yeah, it's free. This is where we're going. Up there. There we go. All right, y'all. I figure we've gone maybe four tenths of a mile or half a mile. Look at that over there. It looks like I would expect a lot of animals to be grazing on that grass. Look how green it is and short. There's Sean, hiking like a champion. Yeah, I think this is probably the most, oh look, there's a travel trailer, which proves y'all, RVs can come up here. In fact, there's one parked down there, but, um, yeah, fifth whale. Because our goal is to find boondocking spots, but we need cellular co coverage. Um, but anyways, I think this is one of my, the more difficult um, hikes I've been on, even more difficult than Devil's Lake. I guess it's the elevation, and I gotta learn how to breathe when I hike. So my chest is kind of burning from all the air and stuff, and my legs are burning. But me and Matthew need this like a lot more to get into shape. And leave us a comment. What has been your most intense hike? Leave the trail name, the state, and everything so we can look it up and um, find you. Also, we have all trails, and you can follow us on all trails and see our hikes, Broken Dreams Reborn. All right, y'all. We're coming up to the summit, the peak. I hope it brings a wow factor because this sucker has been up all the way, unrelenting. Three posts, like the three crosses. Oh wow. Look at this. This is pure amazing. Thank God that we have the time and the physical ability to be able to explore things like this. Do you see that trail? There's a truck and then the trail goes. You think that's a hiker's trail? It might be. So what do you think? It's amazing up here, y'all. It's definitely worth the hike. Yes, it is. All right, y'all. If you follow us on all trails, you'll see this is rated a moderate trail. And it is. I mean, it's pretty strenuous, but it, overall it's moderate except for one point. And I just want to show you. On your way up, and this won't mean anything to you unless you come here. You're going to go up there, and you're going to say, wait a minute, where do we go now? That's where you go. It is a scramble, and if you zigzag, you can make your way up, and then it's another established trail, just like this. Let me show you on the other side. Just like that. So when you hit the dead end, and you will, you're not all the way there. You will be rewarded mightily with the views, but you gotta scramble up there. People in, we just met a couple with a big doodle. It made it up there, so if doodle power can do it, you can do it. Take your time, go slow, watch your footing, and you should have a hiking pole on this trail. I don't. I need one. Um, the hiking pole, you don't lean on it. You just kind of use it to help you with your balance. I'm recovering from being afraid of heights, but I'll be honest with you couple of minor twinges in the knees here and there but otherwise I've been perfectly fine and this is really high up I mean let me show you there's Sean way over there and this is 
about the midway point I'd say because you have to go up 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 past that scramble maybe this is a little bit further than midway but it's not bad y'all if you got good knees and good legs and you can steady your breathing and you don't mind going slow take a trail like this you will be rewarded you just got to get out there we didn't plan on taking this trail Pulled it in the parking lot, and I'm like, that looks like a trail straight up the mountain. <laughs> All right, y'all, we have a special treat for you. We found the movie set for The Sound of Music. It's Julie Andrews, everybody. Look at that. <laughs> All right, maybe it's Sean, but just as good. <laughs> Look at that. It's a field of flowers on a mountainside. All right, y'all, there's Matthew. We just stopped here at this location for a picnic lunch. And look, you can boondock here. Look at this road. You can pull on this road. You can see one RV over there. I think there's another one behind the trees. You can't see them, but you could just pull right in here. And this could be your campsite. And look at this creek. So this creek right here could be your campsite. Someone's already has a fire ring made right there. What do you think? I think this is amazing. We are in the mountains, Bighorn Mountains in Wyoming. Look at this. I mean, look at this. How is this not just amazing? The only bad thing, y'all, AT&T is zip. No cell or data for AT&T. We're not sure about Verizon because um, that's just hooked to the RV. We, that's not mobile for us. And but if you had Starlink, look, open sky. So You do have open sky we, for Starlink. It's not in our budget right now, but if we could get Starlink, we would probably try to come take this spot. Lose number four, Jones. Alright y'all, we were in the middle of having supper, so excuse the mess, but this just happened. I know we're at the Sheridan County Fairgrounds, and it is a pretty nice place to stay. However, not all the people here are very wise. Um, this guy came in at an angle, and he didn't try to correct, he didn't try to pull up and do it again. One and done is his motto. And now he is as close as can be, and you can't see on the other side, but there's at least, I would say, 100 feet on the other side where he could have wiggled around. Here they are. The middle portions of the rear ends that we just saw. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're bringing our slides in because they've got a horse trailer by us. Matthew's going to unhook us so the horses don't step on the um, cord. Oh, they left poo over there too, didn't they? Well, that's what horses do. That's free. We really liked the Sheridan area just, um, what, by happen chance, which seems to be a lot lately in this area. We found this awesome trail that was on private land. Yeah, the Soldier Pass mm -hmm. trail system. All right, Sean, what's going on? Y'all, we are in Sheridan, Wyoming, and this trail, I forgot the name of it, but we'll type it down below, is amazing. We thought we were just gonna eat supper and go for a quick stroll. That's literally, what, a half a mile from the horse track that we're staying at. And we get to see horses, rolling hills. When we're out of the rolling hills, there's mountains behind those hills. Leave us a comment below. Have you been to Ireland? And if you have, does this is this the type of landscape? And have you ever been to Wyoming? And if you haven't, is this how you expected Wyoming to look like? And just wait for the rest of the trail, y'all, because we're going to show you it gets even better. But let me pan around. 
The sun's going down, so excuse the shadows. I mean, look at this right here. Perfectly blue sky. Doesn't this look like something that you only see on pictures? Look at that. But once you pass this hill, it gets even better. We'll show you that. Stay with us. All right, y'all. Sean is silently going nuts right now. I don't want to scare him. No, we, we walked past them going towards the horses and then we walked by and there they are. I didn't even know they were here. Prairie dogs. They're sounding the alarm. See them? You heard of car alarms? These are prairie dog alarms. And there is the sentinel guarding their hole. There's a family. I didn't know we'd see prairie dogs in the wild. Like I thought you had to go to the national parks or Devil's Tower or whatever. But this, we're just taking a trail in the middle of a pasture. And in fact, they say this is private land. You're supposed to stay on the trail. And these prairie dogs are on private land. What do you think about it, Matthew? I think it's amazing. It's just God showing out. Of course, everything is his creation, but this is his creation, Ron. Relatively undisturbed. How did we miss these going down the first time? I don't know. But these prairie dogs, they were active little critters and noisy. And what was your favorite one? There was one, y'all. He was like standing up. He's like, ah! And he was jumping up and down. Like yep. He was at a rock concert and his hand. I mean, I've never seen that. I wish we would have got it on video, but it was just, it was the funniest thing. Uh-huh. He was like sounding the alarm, but. We stayed on the trail, though. We did not go towards them. No. But they didn't like us. It was fun to watch. All right, y'all. We found some of the moo. Zoom in. But look at this. Again with the views. And it's not just the views. We saw the horses, the prairie dogs, the cows, the mountains, Bighorn Mountains. You see some of them peaks are snow-capped peaks. And there's Sean loving every minute of this. Look at this. Blue sky, wispy clouds. This is like something you'd see as a screensaver, isn't it? This is amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. And there's our truck down there. And you see anything in the middle? Grazing on grass? We found some more of the moo. And look at that. There's one red cow in the mix of all of these black ones. Now I'm guessing the black ones are black Angus. I don't know what the red one is. Who knows? Red Angus? I don't know. Tell me down below what it's called. But... Well, I'll tell you what it's called. We oh, found, here we go. We found the red-headed stepchild. There it is. Search no more. We found it. <laughs> Don't mind us. We're just moseying on through past all our friends. Wow, what an experience this has been. We got to stay at a horse track. All they had is electric hookups. But what we recently found out is if you want to just dry camp, then you don't pay anything. So it's like boondocking for free, but we had already paid in advance. So we wound up using the electric, which was 30 amp. 
One fun thing we got to see, there was a couple that came in in a class and they were actually from Denmark. So they flew in from Denmark um, into Salt Lake City to rent a Class C and they had come because of Yellowstone, but they got displaced because you know they closed Yellowstone. And so they wound up here for a night and then the next day they all went to the dump station. It was like a family event, y'all. Like the mom was out there dumping the tanks and the dad was like a proud dad you know he's like her husband taking you know photos and stuff and the little girls helping the mom and the son's holding the mom's dress up so it doesn't get dirty and we want to know <laughs> when y'all go to the dump station is it a family affair does everybody participate or have you ever seen people do that like you know it's their first time and they're all excited <laughs> and you're like but it's a dump station it's not that great so yes. Yeah. Tell us your stories. It was fun to watch. We like yeah. watching people um, in the campgrounds and stuff like that. And obviously, we're on a horse track, so there's lots of horses, y'all. And we like being around the horses. For the most part, these horses are really neat. Like when you go to fill up with water, the horses that are by there want to come see who you are. They're inquisitive. They like to know who you are and what you're doing. They are very, we've learned because we don't know that much about horses, but they're very emotional. So oh, yeah. if you take their little partner out of the cage and they're in there by themselves, they're not happy. No. Or if you put a horse in there with some steers, you know, um, the horse is like, get away from me and it's not happy. <laughs> so we do know that they're very emotional and they get attached oh, yeah. to their um, playmates and stuff like that or their horse mates or whatever you call them. <laughs> um, I think the only negative is they said that, you know, there was nothing going on, but um, last night, what happened last night? It was the, and I might be saying this wrong, the Girls Sheridan County Rodeo or something, and from what we understand, they did a great job. I mean, we've heard people talking about it, we saw a couple of the events ourselves, but man was it packed in here and it's kind of nerve-wracking seeing people just wedge their trailers everywhere as close to you as humanly possible I, I wasn't thrilled about it because it's we've been in close tight-knit RV parks but those are structured you know your space is here your space is there this is like chaos so that wasn't my favorite well and not only is it like well they just parked the trailer by you they parked the trailer and then got the horses out it was just unnerving because you never know the horses when they took one of the horses away then the other one was starting to get feisty and that's like right there by our home we know we've heard people you know camping at nascar you know on the nascar track and stuff but i guess you don't have to deal with horses there but have that's any more of, structured yeah have any of y'all stayed at a horse track or been on a horse track when they had a rodeo and have y'all had like you know big animals really close to your home and how did that make you feel and how did you handle it yep what did you do did you just sit there and take pictures like we did <laughs> we definitely want to come back to Sheridan it was an awesome place and we mm -hmm. feel like there was just so much left untouched or unexplored that we didn't get to do exactly